How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to a new episode of Peeping Ballers. Today, I am so excited to be joined by Mr. Moondog himself, uh, the legendary authority on YouTube when it comes to all things KNT. Mr. Moondog, how you been? Yeah, I'm doing really well. It's nice to meet you guys. And it's quite early in South Korea, so yeah, I'm really excited to speak in English again. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's quite early in Korea. We thank him for waking up. Uh, today, I'm Albert, joined by Jason. A lot to get into, gentlemen. Obviously, South Korea is through to the knockout stages of the Asian Cup. But I think before we delve into the team and the issues surrounding it, let's talk a little bit about background first. So okay. for our international viewers uh, who don't know who Moondog is, uh, Mr. Moondog, can you maybe just give you a brief introduction about yourself and your own background in football? Uh, my name is Moondog, or you can call me Hong Moon. Uh, I mean, I'm running a YouTube channel in South Korea called Moondog. And I used to live in England for 10 years. I've, I've got a UEFA B license over there as a youngest Korean. And now I have an AFCA license as well. And I'm still trying my best, trying to be the best coach in the world. It's good to hear, Moondog. I've been following your channel for, for quite a long time. Uh, big fan. I know that you recently got your A license in Malaysia. So congratulations to you again. Thank I know you your, your ultimate goal is to pursue a career in coaching. And like you said, reach those top levels, whether it's in Europe or managing the national team at the World Cup. What motivated you uh, to start YouTube in the first place? What made me to do my YouTube is that when I, because I, I didn't grow up playing football in South Korea. And when I came back after I've got UFB license, and I realized that there were so many huddles that I have to go through, which was like, that I didn't play K-League in Korea. And all the coaches in South Korea have to be like international players or they had to be at least really good K-League players and for me that was a big huddle for me to break so I thought one thing I can do maybe is to grow up my fan channel and I, I grow my fans so who wants to see my football so that's that's the reason why I started YouTube trying to get my fan base and I know you mentioned about how you spent some time in England which is a yep. completely different culture from South Korea can mm. you maybe explain the differences in the way they coach the players over in the UK compared to how we do it in Korea South Korea football coaching is really improving compared to Europe because I've been here for 10 years now in South Korea again. And there is a lot of like, since so many Korean players went to Premier League or La Liga or Ligang or Bundesliga, they're bringing so many knowledge and ideas to South Korea. And now on YouTube or now you can see from the internet, you can see so many trainings and you can learn a lot from the internet. So I think difference is getting smaller and smaller. But overall, in my opinion, like you can, you can, I think the biggest part is the technical maybe emphasis. So in Europe, when they're young, they play a lot of the matches and they get to like learn the tactics and the good football. And say, for example, if you play for Barcelona, maybe the young players will learn exactly the same as the first team. Obviously, the different trainings, but they will learn the same system. From the young age, they learn tactics and how to play in this system or that system. But in Korea, I think it's more about right now, can we make him a good product? So can we make individual good players and can we maybe sell them or can we maybe make them a good international player instead of making a good team? So I think that's, that is the big difference between South Korea and Europe. Maybe the playing style comes in too. Like if you look into Europe football, there can be like physical teams or there can be like passing style. There can be counter-attacking team. There's so many different ways of playing football. But in Korea, it's improving. It's improving a lot. And there's a lot of the good coaches in th out in South Korea too. But I think mainly in Korea, they still look for the physical ability more than the brain. I'm interested to, to hear your thoughts, Moondog. Like, you know, um, our neighbors in Japan, they have a very yep. set system in how they play. From very, very young, mm. it's always a tiki-taka, short style of passing. Do you think we'd benefit from something like that? Like, not that, you know, the KFA has the competency to set something up like the Japanese Football Federation. But if we were to set up something like that, would that benefit us? If, if the KFA have the role model, like, they want to follow, obviously that, that's going to help a lot. But just looking at the World Cup, when Paulo Bento made a great successful four years and we qualified for last 16, there was a rumor that he left out all the training staff and all the record of the four years of training sessions. So I think that could be a really good model for us. But if you look at the team right now, I think we've lost exactly four years already. So I'm not sure having a good model maybe can help, but are we using that really well? 
because after maybe Paulo Bento left, they recorded all the training stuff and everything. They should be using that, like opening those maybe seminars for coaches to pay and come to the seminars to learn about what Paulo Bento did with South Korean teams, how they start, how how they managed to play, build a football in the World Cup. Because for South Korea, World Cup was always like sitting back, counter-attacking, defending, defending, defending. But last World Cup, we went out there and played our football. There's no really sources that we can learn from it. So are they really using the models well? So I don't know. I think we still have really far way to follow. But having a good model is always good. Yes. Yeah. That's actually a great transition into the next question. So you mentioned mm-hmm. that Paolo Bento was here for four years, right? He built a system. He gave us a blueprint to follow. Mm-hmm. And it seems, to be honest, that maybe the KFA... Chung Young Gyu and Jurgen Klinsmann came up and blew that all up, right? Yeah. And that leads us into the Asian Cup and our performance mm. in the group stages. Mm. So, Moon Dog, let me ask you, unfiltered, honest opinion. First three games in Group E, what did you think of our three matches so far? Disgraceful. That is my opinion. First thing, but I think I, I, see, I saw that coming. To be honest, like before even the Asian Cup, the way he was working for our Korean national team just. Didn't seem right to be honest before we entering the cup. Like when we enter the cup, obviously there's going to be negative opinions about how we how we play football, maybe the tactics. There can be a lot of the issues before we enter the cup. That's I think that goes to any countries, every country in the world. But I think the way he works and way he treats the system and how he came and suddenly just changed everything. What we've been doing, like as a KFA, before like announcing the squad before the conference, like before like announcing the lineup or squad for the friendly matches or World Cup qualifiers. He exactly just threw that one away. And I think he's when someone comes into the new system, obviously they have to follow some what what they've been doing past here historically. But it's been a disgraceful the way we play or the way we fight. And even the last match, three three against Malaysia, I think that's football, to be honest. We could attack, attack, attack and lose to the teams who below us but I think that just summarized our tournament I think is it's not there's no no positive things about Asian Cup so far to be honest so many fans no. was excited wanted to watch wanted to see this amazing squad playing in a Asian Cup and to be honest I think our group was not the hardest group to be honest Korean fans I think their knowledge of the game whether it's tactics they watch football every single day. They wake mm. up to watch Sonny play for Tottenham, Youngie mm. play for PSG. They're used to these high-level football matches where there's a structure in place, there's organization. And I think that the hope for hope was for Korean fans was that, you know, we have this great foundation that Paolo Bento built, and we wanted a manager to build upon that foundation. And I think the first red flag for me, actually, was when they got rid of Michael Kim. And I'm not saying Mm. Michael Kim had anything to do with the tactics, had anything to do with, you know, the aspects of the game. But he was that connection between Bentu and Klinsman. He was also the ones, like Moondog said, he was the ones that recorded all those seminars and left all those notes for the KFA to use. And to me, it's a big red flag that he was left out of the... Um, Korean coaching system. And I think that's Moondog said it perfectly. We saw the red flags coming into the tournament. I, I respect all the opposition that we play, but let's be honest, we should be beating these teams quite easily with the amount of talent that we have. I think it's, it's just that, as you said, I think Korean fans deserve more. That's that's my honest opinion because I don't know what other country fans do, but if you watch South Korea, how many people watch Son play for Tottenham at four o'clock in the morning? How many people wake up at 5 a.m. to watch Gang and Lee play for PSG or Kim Min Jae plays for Bayern Munich or Napoli maybe last season? I do my YouTube stream when they play matches and there's a lot of the YouTubers who does those kind of live streaming for those games. And there's so many people watching the game before they go to their work. So many people give their attention to the players and give their desire and, and time to this Korean team. But what we get from it, I think we get nothing. That, that's a great point. And you know what? We might as well go deeper then. So we talked about the structural issues in this national team then, right? Mm. For those who don't know abroad, the KFA is currently controlled by Hyundai, which is a conglomerate that makes cars. Um, mm. I don't know, Moondog, if any other federation in the world is controlled by a Chebol or a conglomerate. It'd almost be like the USMNT yeah. being controlled by Amazon. Mm. Um, 
So let me ask you, in your honest opinion, as someone who spent time in Korea and abroad, do you think this is also maybe a mental issue in the way that the people in positions of power in administration make their decisions? Is it hubris? Is it arrogance? What is it? Because as a Korean American who's lived in Korea for many years, I think the country has developed a lot and we're learning from Mm. our mistakes. But when I see the way the Federation is structured and the decisions they're making, it doesn't seem like they've evolved from the 1980s and the 1990s. I think they stopped in 2002. They just just literally just stopped because I don't know how to explain it, but I think it's just the arrogancy. They think, oh, because we have good players, we have good youth system coming up. I think they just think, oh, we're going to do well. They don't think about how we need to develop coaches, how we need to develop the players. Korea just, they look at the players, not the whole culture system, in my opinion. Because if you look at England or if you look at other countries, they did really well in World Cup and Euros, things like that, because they try to grow the coaches. They try to grow the players and not just from player, player, like, you know, like not just growing famous players. They grow the people who's got talent in coaching. But in Korea, are they really growing coaches? In my opinion, I don't think so. Like, they all have to make their own own way up there. So The 2002 World Cup was amazing for us. It inspired Mm. a new generation of future footballers. That's where the likes of Sunny, um, Kim Min-jae, Hwang Hee-chan, they all built their careers based on what they saw in 2002. Mm. But at the same time, I think it's clear that the KFA is, you know, favoring the, it's still stuck, like you said, they're still stuck in 2002. Who's getting Mm. all the coaching jobs? Who's getting all the high level positions in the KFA? Mm. If you look at it, it's always been the 2002 members. Mm. And, you know, it's, it's a problem because great players don't make great coaches. I think Mm. we've seen that time and time again. Um, Wayne Rooney, Steven Gerrard, um, the list goes on and on and on. Frank Lambard, exactly. The list goes on and on and on. Meanwhile, we are producing good coaches. Lee jong mm. at Gwangju FC. Uh, Kim Gi-dong, who now, who's now the manager for FC Seoul. I don't believe, you know, that we, we, we're not producing good coaches because we're not capable. The talent mm. is there, but you need to give opportunities to guys, you know, who aren't the best players, who haven't, you know, played in the World Cup. Like yourself, even, Moondog. The guys who are hungry, mm. the guys who are passionate. And I don't think the KFA is set up right now. Um, to do that, which is which is quite unfortunate. And I think the problem is that we we play all different football style. Like if you look, even the K- KFA, like the first team pl- now in Asian Cup, Klinsmann first team. I don't know what type of football they're playing. And if you look at under twenty three, I don't know what type of football they're playing. You look at under twenties or Kim Eun Jung Ho, they played structured football. They played four four two counter attack maybe. So that was a really good system. But it's all different. And under 17s, if you saw the World Cup, they play really good build-up football. Yes. So yeah. each, like, different age group, they play different system. How are, they, are you expecting those players to come up and play good for the first team, do you know? So I think all this kind of stuff have to be worked by FA. That we should have a, our model first, and then we should try to find the coaches. So we're talking about the structural issues, but... If we're looking short term, right, we have a game Tuesday night. It's like Wednesday morning-ish in Korea time against Saudi Arabia. Moondog, we look at the Saudi Arabia team managed by Roberto Mancini. I think anyone with a football brain would say that Mancini is far superior tactically to Jurgen Klinsmann. Honest thoughts for you going into this game. Predictions, concerns. How do you see this one playing out against the Saudi Arabians? I've watched all their games and we played them in the September, I think, in Newcastle, yes. St. James Park. And that game, we won 1-0, I think, if I remember that. But I don't know, like, I think we're going to beat them, to be honest, Saudi Arabia. Because Saudi Arabia comes out with the system, maybe 5-3-2. And Mancini, because he knows... He knows he, he like he's a he's, he's he has a good career as a football manager. So I don't think he's gonna sit back and defend. I think he's gonna press. He's gonna fight, and he's going to fight trying to win with better football. And when it comes to that, I think squad player matters. Our players are too good within that gap. I think it's gonna be a really big fight, good game, end to end football. But I think we're just gonna overcome because we have better players. We're playing terribly like you said our performances have been disgraceful and i would say 99 percent of that has to do with Mm. terrible coaching Uh, i want to know what you think is the solution to this team because for me i've said quite often in our videos that coach isn't utilizing the players to their strengths Uh, Mm. for example cho gyuzong who's been getting a lot of scrutiny i think it's unfair to him because he's not being put in the position for him to succeed and one thing that i suggested was putting sun up top like he does at tottenham 
and adding the extra midfielder so we can control games better. And I think that helps us both offensively and defensively. For this Saudi match and then going forward in the knockout stages, what do you think is, you know, one or two quick fixes that we can implement uh, to better uh, set us up going forward? This sounds sad, but I think it's going back to the old way, old school. Maybe we set up as a 4-4-2 and we sit back and counter-attack. I think that's going to give us a win because we're used to it. Players know how to play that system, just sitting back, parking the bus, and if we park the bus against the Saudi Arabia or maybe Australia or team, other teams, we're stronger than them. We, we have better players, to be honest. So when we tried to break down Malaysia, when they played 5-4-1, tried to defend, it was really hard to break them down after 40 crosses and 20 corners. So if we do that op- opposite way, we sit back and defend and we play anti-football. We have pace of Huang, we have pace of Son, we have creative midfielder like Lee. I think, I think we can beat them. And that's the maybe quickest way to adjust. Don't really have the system. I don't know what type of football they're playing right now. Counter-attack. Lee passed the ball to them into the space. And that will force Saudi Arabia to come up and play football, which will create so much space in behind. Speaking of then the tactics you would employ, in my opinion right now, from what I saw in the three games, is the midfield is a problem, especially in the mm. Malaysia game. I think Hwang Inbom didn't have enough support. If it was me, I would probably play a 4-3-3 with maybe um, Hwang Inbom obviously on the right side, and then maybe a Pak Jin Sop to cover for the back four, and then maybe someone quicker like a Hong Yeon Sok who can also recycle possession, who's someone who's press resistant. Because right now, I think the biggest issue is our midfielders are just not resistant to the press, and they start fumbling the ball in the middle of the park, especially Pak Yong Woo. In your opinion, Moondog, what do you think is the bigger problem? Do you think it's this midfield issue, or also do you think a center back is a problem too? Because I don't have much confidence either in Chung Sung Yeon. I didn't really have a big trust in Chung Sung Yeon entering the tournament. But looking at the games... So far, three games. I think he's been... He didn't play the last game, but I think against Yodan, he was not that bad. I thought he had an okay game. But I think it's not the midfield issue. I don't think it's the back four issue or anything like that. I think it's the giving them the right role. Like, if you look at modern football, number 10 is missing. Like, number 10 is going out from the football. Number 10s, back in the days, we have Ozil, we have Schneider, we have Van der Vaart. We have all these kind of players who were able to just attack, not defend. If you look at our football, Son is playing as a 4-4-2, one of the striker, and Kang In Lee is playing on the right. Both of them are playing as a free role. If you look at the game, they just go wherever they want. That will lead other players to fill in the gaps for them, which is too much because both of them are doing it. So I think just giving them a clear role, maybe Sonny just play on the left and maybe having Kang In Lee on the right. So we have both, both, what do you call it, both flankers who have different tech, technical ability. Like if you look at Man City or if you look at the good teams who made good results, one side they will have a quick player, a quick winger, and the other side they'll have a skillful player who can retain balls. So I think that could be the real good idea. And against Jordan, against Malaysia, me tried to get the result. Sony was always on the left and Gang In Lee was always on the right. Because they're all out on the flanks, that helps the midfielders to stay in midfield. But if Sony stays out front and Gang In Lee stays on the right, because they roll around so much, it makes other players to fill in their gaps when they defend. That's the, that's the problem, not, not, the, not the tactic, not the, like the formation. Giving them a clear roles, clear ideas, then I think we should overcome Saudi Arabia, to be honest. Going back to uh, big picture stuff, Mundog, um, obviously mm. this is Clinton's test. He's asked, he's asked the media time and time again to wait until the results of the Asian Cup before he gets judged. Sonny's father famously said in an interview before the Asian Cup that he doesn't want Korea to win the Asian Cup. He thinks that if mm. we win the Asian Cup, it's gonna it's false belief. It's it's lying to us. We're not ready. And if we win the Asian Cup when we're ready, then it's going to lead to more arrogance and the KFA thinking we're doing a good job. I'm interested to know, would you agree with what Sonny's father is saying? Or do you still want us to win the Asian Cup, even if it means that we might have to stick with Klinsman until 2026? Uh- as a Korean football fan, I want us to win. I want us to win the cup because 64 years, that's way too long. But I think that sh- cup should be brought back home. But Son- what Sony's dad said, I do agree in a way because look, look, look just one year ago, what happened? We, we went out to the World Cup, played really good football, went into the last 16. First thing KFA did was to release those Sungujojak people, you know? Max fixing people. That that was the first thing they did after winning the Asian Cup. I don't know what will happen. 
So I'm scared too. Yes, I'm really scared because KFA, I think they are really arrogant the way they're running the system because football is for everyone. Football is for Korean fans. Football is for who loves to coaching, who loves playing. It's for everyone. But it, for me, it looks like it's only for them. It's a business think, to them. Yeah, I think it's just a business to them. But for us, it's not really a business. It's, it's a love. It's a passion. It's, someone, it's someone's dream, you know? From a big picture perspective, in terms of the KFA and the way they structure the game across the country, you don't, do you think it's a matter of just bringing in maybe more foreign coaches to Korea, giving a fresh perspective? Or if you were in charge of operations, would you just tear the whole thing down and eliminate all the people at the top in terms of the business people and just put football-minded people? Because we saw at the end of the World Cup, I believe a bunch of people resigned from the committee as well. I mean, do you mm -hmm. think there's a clash of personalities there? When, when we try to change, you can't change everything at the one, one time. I think there will be still good people there, you know. Not, not everyone's going to be bad, you know. So I think, okay, we have to change slow, like slowly, one step by step. First thing should be that do they love Korean football? So I think that's, that should come first. Like, are they coming here because they pay good money? Because this comp good company, you will get good salary. Is that the reason why you're going into KFA? Then I think that's wrong. Because KFA is a FA, like football association. That means it's not for them, you know. It's for the people who wants to play football, who wants to watch football. So the first thing they should look at hiring people or maybe making new whole system should be that do they really love football? Do they really have a passion that they want to change Korean system? But for me, they're going in there because it's a good nick, it's a good name for them, and they'll get good money and it's it's quite easy job. And I still believe there are good people working in that system too right now. There's good people for sure. Like if you look at everything during Bento's era. Kim mm. Hwang-won was our technical director. He genuinely, mm. like Moondog said, had a love and a passion for Korean football. He went to Europe multiple times to interview multiple candidates. And there were big names that he interviewed that he said mm. no to because he didn't think that they were taking the job seriously. Similar yeah. to Klinsman, because he's making ESPN appearances right now as a national team manager, which is absolutely ridiculous. And you had Michael Mueller before he was the technical director. He was doing mm. good stuff with the development of Korean football. So I yeah. firmly believe that if the business people, they can stay there. But if they step aside and let the experts do their job, they find the right mm. people, then we can improve as you know, a country, as a nation. And I genuinely believe that we have the talent to go you know, to the uh, quarterfinals, the semifinals. We can repeat 2002 as long as we have the right system in place. Yeah, um, definitely, we have, we, have, we have so much quality in our country. Like just not even looking at football, looking in every every part of the society, we have really good talent because our our generation or maybe our nation nationality people, we work hard. That's the basic ethic: work hard, passion. Everybody does that, you know. That's why we're growing so so much more in every different systems, you know. I don't understand why they're running it like that because it's, it is a business, but you should not think this is a business. This is a place where they should improve the Korean football. Uh, so to end off the, the interview, Moondog, I kind of want to know your plans. I know you recently just got your A license. Um, I know watching, mm. following, your, following your work, you recently had some offers from Malaysia. Um, some K4, K3 clubs are, are looking to hire you. Um, what are your plans, I guess, for the next year and then looking ahead 5, 10 years from now? I think I'm going to continue my YouTube because that was the reason why I could at least establish my name in Korea by a little bit by through my YouTube to show my coaching stuff, style. And maybe I think uh, if possible, I'm trying to get a P license next year. So if, if I get a P license, that means I can go anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world to become a head coach in any system. So yeah, that is one of the, my aims and any teams, I don't know whether it's Hong Kong, whether it's India, whether it's Indo Indonesia or Vietnam, Malaysia, Singapore, I don't really care now. Any, anywhere who can offer me a, just surviving money, survival money. Yeah. I'm, I'm willing to go as a head coach. I'm willing to try my best to show the people that I can actually be the one in South Korea one day. Yeah, I will, I will lead this team. I'm that very, very dream. excited yes. for that because I love your view of football. I love, you know, your emphasis on progressive football, not reactionary, mm -hmm. controlling the game, taking the game to the opponents. And I think, honestly, the fact that there's so many Korean coaches working abroad and finding success, 
whether it's Shin Taeyong for Indonesia, Park Kang Soo who was for Vietnam, and now Kim Bang Kwon for Malaysia. I think that helps you mm. uh, moving forward. So uh, myself and then our viewers will will continue to to cheer you on, and hopefully uh, one day we'll get to see you lead our, our Korean national team to the World Cup. Before I go, I just want to say one more thing about Klinsman. You know, like you know, like after the games, after three games. Klinsman does the same interview over and over and over and again. He always blames the referee, and I really hate that. There's a quote that men blame someone, he still has a long way to go. And men who blames himself is halfway there. And men who blames nobody is already there, you know? But he's a leader of our team. Players are looking at him. Players are listening to him. Players get motivated by him. But after every game, not just if it, if it was just a one game, I would understand. But after every game, he's talking of the, about the referee. I think that shows the mentality of the team, you know? Oh, we're not getting the result because of the referee. We're not doing well because of the referee. The decisions are poor against us. I think that would drag us down, you know? So I think he should stop. He should stop literally just saying those kind of interviews, blaming other people. He should be the one blaming himself. Great KFA, look, just looking at that part, they really supported Klinsman really well. They brought him the coaching staff he wants. They recently gave him a two analysis. But he's just blaming other people, you know. He's, he's asking fans not to criticize until the tournament is finished. But the work, the work he does deserves to get criticized. We heard it here first, guys. Responsibility is the first step uh, mm. to fixing things. And we'll look forward to our coming game against Saudi Arabia. Moondog, I believe you'll have your regular live stream for that match as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yes. Yeah, guys, we'll uh, leave the link to uh, Boondog's channels in this description. Be sure to follow him for all things related to the KNT. And like Jason said, one day he's going to be the coach of our national team, so might as well follow him before that happens. Uh, Jason, Moondog, any last uh, words before we wrap up here? I wanted to thank uh, Moondog for his time today. Like I said, big fan of his work. Excited to uh, to interview him for, for KNT. You know, it's been tough lately to cheer the boys on. Um, I even said, half jokingly, you know, I want us to lose against Saudi Arabia so I can see Klinsman out of Korea. Uh, but, you know, Tuesday is going to roll in. I'm going to cheer for our boys and I uh, hope that, you know, that we're able to produce a miracle and win despite of our coach. Because at the end of the day, I want to see Sonny lift up that trophy and then pass on the torch to Lee Gang-in as the next superstar of this national team. I, w- I still want Klinsman to leave the country, but I want him to leave the country with a great honor. So, Yep, win the cup for us. Leave when everyone's clapping. If he wins, he's staying till twenty twenty six. But, <sighs> but I think I think you know how he how he stopped his working for Hertha Berlin. You know, we, the media yeah. should start working more. Huh? <laughs> just just get him on a Facebook live. <laughs> yeah, make get him on a Facebook live or maybe YouTube live. Then maybe he might resign. You know, so yeah. We'll see how it goes against the Saudis. That'll be the first big test. I believe, gentlemen, if we beat the Saudis and the Australians take care of business tonight, we will play Australia in the quarterfinals. That'll be another big test. In the meantime, uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button on Beaming Ballers and also follow Moondog on his channel. He does a lot of great work. Moondog, thank you so much for joining us today. It was an absolute pleasure. Hope we can do it again. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the Asian Cup. And I hope we win, like you said. But yeah, we'll see what happens with Mr. Jurgen. I think at least we will get to the semifinals. In Better. my opinion, we'll go to, we'll, I think we'll get to the semifinals. And if you play Jordan, I think we're going to lose. Oh, Lord. I think if you play Iraq, we're going to the final. Japan and Korea, come on. We got to see this, eh? We got to see this.